Let me bring in Dr Ashley uh, Frawley, Senior Lecturer in Sociology at Swansea University and very, very patient person. Um, Ashley, thank you very much. Um, I, I appreciate you hanging on. I know you, you're um, pressured for time. Um, you are not in favour of this legislation, am I right in saying that? Yeah, not at all. No. Um, why not? Um, I, it's been really frustrating listening to some of this because, um, OK, if it is assault, yeah, worthy of being a criminal offence, then you should shop that woman to the cops. Her children should be taken away from her and she should be charged with assault because she smacked her kid. Do you understand? You, people don't even believe what they're saying. But there was a distinction in the law. The law recognized that sometimes parents may choose to use this as a form of discipline. Now that has been taken away. Now you cannot use that discretion. And what, you're actually, what people are actually promising here as a virtue is an arbitrary enforcement of the law. That is not a good situation to be in. Do you know who winds up at the end of an arbitrary enforcement of the law? Poor people, migrant communities. That's what we see in Norway, where they have very strong child protection laws. The child of an immigrant mother is four times more likely to be taken away from her. Um, and and there's, we know that we have institutional racism. It's no surprise that in Ireland, the first person charged was an immigrant. Um, because you're more in contact with services. When you're poor, you're, you're less likely to be able to defend yourself. You're less likely to be given the benefit of the doubt. If, look, you may not agree with this as a form of child discipline, but whether or not it should be a criminal offense is another question. Because when you make something a criminal offense, you're opening the door to a huge range of consequences that are much, much worse than that form of child discipline. Okay, you, so, so you, just you to clarify, register, just to like, clarify, really Ashley... Bad. Yeah. You, your objection to this legislation is not necessarily that you support the physical chastisement of children. I, I don't know. Where do you stand on the physical chastisement of, of children? It, it seems that your objection is more that you don't think this is good law. No, it's terrible. It's very bad law. I'm very worried about this. Um, the law, like the law, recognised that parents may use this as a form of discipline. Whether I use it to discipline my own children is my, my own discretion. When people, were, you know, the abuse of children is another question, and that was rightly already subject to the full force of the law. Now what campaigners have done have is they've tried to use the law to enforce a moral argument, which is that you should not use this form of discipline. Well, well there was they that... that... The vast majority of people don't agree. Well, but, but actually, the, there was this loophole, if you would call it that, of reasonable chastisement. And, and yes, you're absolutely right. You know, I mean, if a parent or anyone else was guilty of abusing children in, in, in that sense, then absolutely they were subject to the full force of the law. But there was this greyish area which is reasonable chastisement whereby you know the tap on the hand the smack the slap on the bum or or whatever um and that's what has been wiped out but i mean do you support that i mean do you think do you think that is a reasonable way to to communicate with children and to discipline children it, first of all, it wasn't a loophole. It was a recognition that there's a difference yeah. between this form of... I appreciate that. Probably adults. bad language on my not, part. A great area, not, let's well, say. That's what, that's what campaigners were using. They were like making it sound like people were using it to get away with assault. You could not use this to get away with assault. The bar was purposely set very, very high. You could not, you know, abuse a child. And use and in Wales, it hadn't been used even as a defence in 10 years. Sure. So, so what we come back to loophole. is whether or not we want to use any form of physical discipline on children. Um, and we heard from Andrea Chatner earlier on who says that no, absolutely not, because essentially what that teaches children is that when you are in a difficult situation dealing with difficult emotions then it is justifiable to lash out um, uh, physically and and that's her problem with it and is that not what this law is about is saying not just to adults not just to children but also to adults as James says that a physical response a violent response um, to emotional difficulties is not appropriate yeah, I found that actually kind of funny because she was saying, you know, you know, people need to be taught that regardless of your mistakes, you have to feel accepted. Punishment is not a good way to teach anybody anything, except that they want to use the law, which is threat of punishment, to teach adults how to relate to their children. It's funny because it's, you know, it's a terrible, apparently a terrible way to teach children anything. But for adults who actually are in possession of full, their full faculties of reason, that's apparently the only way to convince them of anything. So, I, I, you know, what, what, to, thre to threaten them with the law? Exactly, because they feel that they can't win a public debate about this. Um, they've 
it's thought to use the law to quote unquote send a message. And they don't care what happens after that because the whole point of the, they're just using the law as a symbolic tool. But that is extremely dangerous. Okay, let, let me bring like, James back in then. James, do you accept that? Not at all. So to, let, let's go back to the, the mid to late 70s. So using the law to stop domestic violence was just an unacceptable tool. I don't think so. It's funny how uh, people against this would call it discipline when actually this is violence. If it's wrong to be, commit violence to one another, it's wrong to commit violence to children. And what you're doing is you're just making them violent because the most violent people in society have had violence done to them. And it's not about using the law. It's about changing the whole culture of society. Ashley? The majority, of people, the vast majority of people were smacked as children. The vast majority of people are decent, law-abiding adults. Violence has actually gone down over the last 30 years. We have, we have actually a much less violent society. Reportage of violence has gone up, but actual instances of violence has gone down. Um, and if you think that this is domestic violence, if it really honestly you believe that, then 80% of Scottish parents who would use this as a form of discipline should go to jail. Do you really believe that this is a form of domestic violence? James? <laughs> Any violence towards children, whether it's in the home or whether it's outside or whether it's violence between adults or, uh, as Stephen was saying, uh, towards brothers and sisters, it would depend on the situation, it depends on the environment. Th this is a lazy option. Violence is not right. We, we cannot accept violence, and this, this is a massive landmark step in how Scotland, how we all treat, treat each other. Well, Even if it was a lazy option, which I don't think, do you want the police to enforce parents not being lazy? You need to, like, there needs to be a line. When you invite the police into family life, you are inviting a huge range of unintended consequences. Like, you, in, uh, you being investigated for child abuse is extremely Well, well but Ashley, to, to be fair, that, 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 that was like, once... Shows up in a background check, Ashley, not charged. Actually, that was once, and as James alluded to it there, that was once the response to um, domestic violence. You know, and the police wouldn't get involved because what happens behind closed doors happens behind closed doors, and that is not something for the police to be involved in. That's where we were 30 years ago. Also, what we would consider domestic violence, even 20 years ago, even now, would be considered against the law even before this law was changed. We're talking about a smack on the back, on the bum, which, parent, which adults don't do to each other because adults are in possession of the full faculties of reason. Children are still being socialized. They're still being taught boundaries. They're still being taught right and wrong. You can't, sometimes you cannot reason with children, and that is why sometimes parents will choose to do this. Whether or not you agree with that is a different question from whether or not it should be criminal because the consequences of charging someone with a criminal assault are much, much greater than this Form of discipline. Okay, let's bring in Andrea Chatton again. Andrea, you know, you argued um, very strongly at the beginning uh, in favour of this legislation because you absolutely don't feel that, that any kind of physical chastisement should be part of, of rearing a child. But taking Ashley's point, do we need to make it a criminal offence? But, you know, through this, this, uh, this debate has been absolutely fantastic. I've been, sometimes I've been punching the air and kind of like, yes, and sometimes I've been putting my head in my hands and kind of like, no. Um, the, the truth of the matter is children do need discipline. They need some kind of form of understanding what is right and wrong. They need to have that, those boundaries, but it needs to be communicated. It was interesting that Ashley said that the levels of violence have gone down, but the levels of mental health have significantly, significantly gone up. So, yeah, learning has also gone down. Sorry? We, people are less likely to use this as a form of discipline than was the case 30 years ago. In fact, all around the world, every single culture uses some form of physical discipline and has always done. If it was the case that it led to psychological problems, then you would expect every generation throughout history to be very psychologically damaged. And the generation raised in the last 30 years to be the most mentally well, have the best positive mental health than has ever been the case in the past.
That's not the case. I don't think that's the statistical thing with what we're seeing in, in, in it at the moment at all. The levels and degrees of mental health are, are, are skyrocketing. That's why the that's whole what of I'm the, saying. the government. Less, I mean, well, well, physical discipline well I think we've got a difference years. here in interpretation. I mean, I think, Andrea, you're saying that mental health uh, is poorer than it previously was, are yes. you? Yes, whereas yes, actually. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's, 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 mental health is poorer, and people have used less physical discipline than has ever been the case in human history. And uh, there's mm. no correlation there. These things are completely unrelated. No, well, I, well, I don't think they are unrelated. I think there is definitely a factor. If you can get the right level of discipline with your children so that it's communicated, and yes, there needs okay, to be a sanction. Okay, if they are related, well, then if, the they're, if they are related, we should be less... Okay, okay, hang on, hang on, hold on, hold on. Please. Yeah, Andrea, if you finish, and then Ashley, please come back in. Andrea? Thank you, Ashley. I just, I just needed to finish what I was saying, mm -hmm. just to show that you're actually listening. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. What was I saying? It's not the severity of a sanction with children that communicates to them understanding it. It's about the the, the certainty of it, and it doesn't have to be a, a smack. It can be another form of sanction. Children learn how to regulate. Don't get me wrong; it needs to be uncomfortable. A sanction. A child needs to feel not happy about it, but it shouldn't lead to something that causes them to repress that negative emotion. And just to one last thing. What un underpins levels of aggression and anger is lots of factors, feeling sad, having low self-esteem, feeling like a failure, feeling lots and lots of things. If we are being smacked as children, then we are those, those things are being fed within us and we are more likely to react more angrily and aggressively in situations across our lifespan. Ashley? Sorry, I was so used to just yelling into the void when I was on, on pause, on, on mute there for a while. <laughs> um, so if they are related, so if you're saying that there is a correlation between how parents raise their children and later levels of mental health, then we should see lower levels of, of, um, of mental illness now. Because in the last 30 years, people have used far less physical discipline than has been the case historically. Second, um, it's, that's fine. You can say, oh, yes, there are many, many methods. Sure, you are free to go on the radio and invite people to come over to your way of raising children. You must not, you, must not, you should not use the law to enforce your particular chosen form of child discipline because what winds up happening is you create a huge range of unintended consequences. The reason why I feel so strongly about this is because I come from Canada. I'm Indigenous. I'm, I'm um, uh, Ojibwe. And I have seen... The, the problems that result from authorities overstepping their bounds. We have a problem in Canada right now where there are more children in care than there were during the 60s scoop when they specifically rounded up Indigenous children and put them in care. You have to be very, very careful about where you set boundaries. You do not use the law to enforce things because what winds up happening is those who are the poorest in society, those who are in migrant communities, um, are, who are less able to defend themselves, le they have less recourse to legal counsel, they have, um, they're have, they less likely to be given the benefit of the doubt, they are the ones who bear the brunt of these kinds of policies. What winds up happening is if you, even if you are never charged with anything, you that uh, the fact that you've been investigated for child abuse winds up on a background check, on an enhanced background check, your children get placed on a risk register, you wind up getting subject to extraordinary surveillance and studies show that once you have been investigated, you are less likely to take up less heavy-handed forms of intervention like parenting classes because you feel that you, you were under attack. You've had to defend yourself against charges of child abuse. When you call the well, police, they don't come to support you. They come to investigate. And so what, this, Ashley, and is exactly about, your, how, about violence. So what you're saying, that, Ashley, that this is a nice middle-class law that makes middle-class people feel better about themselves? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And it reflects their morality.